one thing that I've, I've really discovered over the last year, which I was not expecting to discover, is how love and, and creating a prosperous coaching practice go together. Yes. And, and could you talk a little bit about that? Because that was, the, being very honest, it was the last thing I was expecting you know, to, to discover was more about love. Well, you know, if uh, a lot of times I get, uh, I'll be um, exchanging emails or something and, and having a hard time getting a client, let's say. And then if I, if I step back, trying to figure out how to answer a certain email, and I ask myself, what would love do right now? And um, that all of a sudden, it opens me to all kinds of compassionate, creative forms of communication that I've been forgetting that I my mind had narrowed down into kind of a greed based exchange and I I've, I've been forgetting that uh, my job is to love this person that's my job and um, so it it has so much to do that when people feel the openness and feel the love and um, your your lack of ego in the relationship which is love then, then the career moves faster, and the, and and money flow. Money is just an exchange of energy with, with the world. It's their energy being exchanged for yours. That's what money is just a, a, a representation of that. Money itself means nothing. It's just paper, but it represents a, an exchange of energy, and for that, their energy to be flowing into my life and mine to be flowing into them, that happens with love. That doesn't happen with fear or caution or um, any of that stuff. Yeah, and, and one thing that I've seen deeper again through through our work together is what love means. And, and I guess it's one of the, the questions that people have been asking for, for millennia, but I, I guess I've seen more that love isn't necessarily timid and nice and, and wanting to be liked all the time. Sometimes love can be can be powerful and um, uncomfortable for, for some people but um, I mean I don't have kids myself but you know what I've seen with with parenting and, and how my parents brought me up and, and how I see kind of my friends is that sometimes really loving their child for example can be setting boundaries and being tough and, and actually letting letting their child do whatever they want isn't isn't loving and, and I really apply that to coaching yeah being a doormat and caving in and having no boundaries, that's not love. Sometimes love uh, is fierce. Turns the tables over in the temple, takes a bull whip to the money changers. Mm. Could, could we talk a little bit about some of the misconceptions that you see coaches have or maybe beginner coaches have around the whole coaching profession? Because I know you work with a whole load of coaches and perhaps that's quite a broad question, but maybe some of the key themes, key things that you see perhaps over and over again with, with coaches? Well, one of the, one of the first um, levels, all coaches who, be, who eventually become prosperous, let's put it that way, they pass through stages of dysfunction. And I've never seen anyone skip any of these stages. So therefore, in a way, these stages are actually good. I mean, they're, they're, they tell you you're on the path, even though they feel uncomfortable. Uh, so just like learning to play a musical instrument, um, it feels like I can't do this, my hands aren't the right size. And, and you pass, even Eric Clapton passed through that stage when he was learning to play the guitar and Jimi Hendrix, they went through the stage of, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. This is too hard for me. And that's, that is a, a, a step along the way. That, that, that's not a reason to quit. A lot of people say, therefore I quit. So, um, so I think one of the first things is when, when coaches um, interpret their day as a day filled with failed sales conversations. In other words, uh, I talked to that guy, he didn't want coaching, so I blew it, so that's a failed sales call. I talked to three other people, they all said no, so that's a failed sales call. Um, if you take that approach to being a coach, it is miserable. Uh, if, I, if I did that and stayed with that all my time as an early coach, I would, I would have gotten out. 
I didn't want to be a salesman or a telemarketer. I wanted to coach. And so that approach is, um, is doomed to failure. If, on the other hand, I will do the very same communications with these people, but I will see it as delivering value and creating relationships all day, then, then I have a fulfilling day. I love my work, and I'm helping people from the minute I wake up to the minute I finish my professional day. Everything I've done, I never will send an email that just is trying to find out whether you're going to get back to me and why didn't you call me and are you going to work with me or not. The, this is misery. This is absolute hell to try to build a coaching practice that way. So I would say that's the first misconception is that building a practice um, results in a series of failed sales calls. That's just, it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, no, that, yeah. that that that's powerful. That's powerful, and um, again, I, I I know it certainly felt like that for me a few years ago. And and again, one thing I've learned from you is um, always be always be helping, always be serving, always be giving value. Whatever words fit fit for for people that are listening to this, but it it feels a lot better to do it that way around. It feels yeah. like we're, I, I'm 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 doing good. Yeah, you've made a difference. Everything. Do not communicate if you're not willing to make a difference and help in that communication, not in the long run or not down the road when they pay you or not someday after they've met you, but right here, right now. So so one question I got, got asked by someone was, well, I, I keep helping people, but then they get what they want and then they don't come back. So what well, would you say to someone like that? That's not true. They, they don't come back. That's true. But if someone is, see, see just, just check in with yourself. Did you get everything you wanted in life after talking to somebody for an hour? That, that can't be true. That, that's not happening. Now, maybe somebody tells you, well, I'm fine. I've, you know, thank you. I got what I needed from you. Bye bye. All that means is that this was not a very powerful exchange, because um, it, it, I'll use the metaphor of the golf teacher. If if, if he gave me a few tips on, uh, that's just a, like one percent of my golf game that I went out and applied. That's not. I'm now a good golfer. My whole game is great now. Thank you. I got what I wanted. That just doesn't happen. So um, that when people say I got everything I wanted, that's a polite way of saying I don't want to talk to you any further. It's not powerful enough talking to you. That's what they mean. So I want to change my game. I want to have my uh, time I give away, if I think of it that way. I want to have it be more meaningful and be... Um, help people more than it now does. And, and do you have any practical suggestions around that or, or, or would you come back to the whole just love well, them or? Here's the number one thing. I'm making a recording on this tomorrow that I'm going to give you and you're, you're free to do share it with this group if you like. But I'm making a recording on the um, number one attractor of clients that a coach can have. What's the number one thing that's going to attract clients to me? And the number one attractor of clients is how good you are as a coach. That's number one. Because if you, if you are really good as a coach, you really make a difference with people you coach, and their lives change from talking to you, they will tell other people about you, and other people will contact you and say, I want you to do with me what you did with my friend. Will you take me on as a client? And that's that's how it works with coaching because that's how it works with everything. If you're a good chiropractor and you've cured my friend or my brother-in-law or somebody, I will check you out. I, he will tell me about you and I will go in and say, I have a bad back too, can you, can you work with me? 
So the number one thing, so uh, when I have conversations and people don't hire me, that's because the, the conversation didn't include good enough coaching. And I want to wake up to that fact. How good am I? And how good am I willing to be? I noticed uh, you posted that you're reading Mastery right now. Yeah. And that's such a beautiful little book. It really applies to coaching. Um, I want I want to master this profession. I don't want to just kind of play around with it. And yeah, I want. I took a few seminars and. Uh, in the three principles now I think I'll see if I can get some clients and well okay so you talk to someone for an hour is their life different because of that oh I don't know I sort of like them they sort of like me I didn't I didn't want to get pushy I didn't I, I you know okay great good luck yeah no that that's 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 pretty powerful and um, I know for me when I've spent time with um, in the three principles community what's called first generation teachers people who have been learnt from Sydney Banks and been around this for a long time you know I, f I always feel impacted by, by, by those people and, and it's different with, with different people so I, I can see how that works for you know it's not just oh that's well that applies to other coaches it doesn't apply to the principles I see that with, with people within the principles and it and it does come down to how we're showing up and how how deeply we understand things, because as, as we do, then we, we impact people. It does. And how much homework do you do? And um, how how have you developed yourself as a coach? How much coaching do you do? Because every time you coach someone, you get better as a coach. Every every coaching session you have, you're now a better coach than you were. And so, therefore, the uh, the path to being so good as a coach that um, they can't ignore you is is to coach all the time. Michael Neal says this. Rich Liffin says this. That is the key. Coach, coach like crazy because you'll get better and better and better and better. You'll fail forward. And and what about someone who who who's really really starting out and. They just can't find, or they, or it looks like to them. Because I, I, I've got a, a view on what you might say, but it looks like to them that they can't find clients. Where are they, they can't get any clients. That, you know, there's well, no I, one around. How like, how how do you start getting experience? Sorry. I like to ask that person a question and say, if I, I'm I'm going to take you to uh, Hyde Park in London. And I'm going to give you um, 50 $100 bills. And, and your, your job is to, uh, over the next two hours, give these away. Give them to people. $100 or you have a 100 pound note. Who knows? We have 50 pound note. Okay. You've got, you've got 50 pound notes. And your job is to give them to people. Now, would you tell me, but I don't know who to give them to. I, I wouldn't know who to give them to. I wouldn't know how to talk to the person that I would give it to. Um, and and the, the reason that you wouldn't say that kind of thing is because you and the other person, but you know this is valuable for people. So you have no problem um, communicating with people and giving them, giving them this, okay? There's no problem for you doing that. There's no timidity. There's no call reluctance. There's no diving into the revelation that you've just discovered you're an introvert and you need to study what the ramifications and the nuances and the implications of what it is to be an introvert. You need to study that for a year before you talk to anybody else. It's none of that. You just walk up to nice people and say, um, I've been asked to give, give these away. I, I hope you'll take it. And that's because you get the value of the 50 pound note or the hundred dollar bill. You get it. Now, if you got the value of what it would be like for someone to talk to you for an hour, you would have no, you would never ask, I don't know who to talk to. I have no idea who to contact. You'd never ask that question. You'd be too busy communicating this. 
with people. You couldn't you couldn't stop. I have uh, I had a guy um, who came to one of our coaching schools years ago, and he had never really been out as a coach, and he got so excited uh, about being a coach, and he 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 that um, he took a vacation. On the airplane, he got a client, the guy sitting next to him. The first restaurant he went to with his family, um, the waiter in Malibu became a client of his after waiting on him. They exchanged information and, 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 and he came back from vacation with five clients. Now, how does that work? Because everybody else in the class is trying to figure out let me see, what strategy should I use to contact somebody? I don't know who to call. I don't know who to talk to. Well, um, the, again, the answer is, is the same. The better you get as a coach, the easier, the easier it is to see who needs your work, the less shy or timid you are about communicating with human beings and just saying, hey, how's it going in your life? Well, what are your challenges right now? Well, I have a challenge. I've got a new job. You know what? I help people with that. Uh, which, mm -hmm. if it would be of service to you, I'll I'll give you a session. Wow, would you do that? I'd be glad to. Okay, I could do that all day long. And people say, "Oh, well, that's because you have books out, and you you're older than God." No. <laughs> that's not why. It's because I, I could do it with people who didn't know me. Mm -hmm all day long because I know that an hour with them they will love they will love it now that's not arrogance that's experience so get your experience up to where you know if you knew that spending time with people would benefit them greatly you'd find any way in the world to do it because it would benefit they'd be glad for it once it happened I, I remember hearing you once say that again to challenge the conception that you know people know you or you've got a brand or you need to be well known that you could be dropped into any any city in, in America and, and you could create a, co a coaching practice absolutely change my name uh, I could be dropped into Columbus Ohio a new witness protection program brand new name I could build my practice up to where it is right now in a matter of maybe two months. Wow. And uh, so it's not about personal branding. These are all lures to get you away from really helping people. I got to get my website up. I've got to get better known. I need more credibility. I want people, I, I need to build my reputation. People don't hire coaches because of that. I had a woman call me from New York City. And she had been on Oprah three times. She was a coach. And she had a book out. Oprah had her on the show. And she said, um, I've got the strangest thing happening. I live in Manhattan. I got a book out. I've been on Oprah three times and I can't get clients. And uh, she thought the way to become a prosperous coach was to be well known and to be. And, I, and so I asked her, um, why would anybody hire a coach because they've been on Oprah? I've never heard of that. I've never heard of any human being in my decades and decades of life in this world. I've never heard of anyone hiring somebody because they saw them on television. What kind of a brain-damaged, drug-addled moron would do that? No, no sane human being would hire you because you were on Oprah. In fact, it, it would be, they would think she's probably too expensive. She's, she is a uh, publicity hungry celebrity type person who couldn't relate to me. So, so all this stuff about personal branding and uh, for coaching, it, it's irrelevant. You want to be the best kept secret in the world. Now, if you're running scams and schemes and, and low-cost little internet programs or something like that, then yes, you need to market and get, get known. But for one-on-one -on -one coaching, it has no relevance whatsoever. In fact, CEO of a 
of a really high profile company, what he loved most about hiring me was no one had heard of me. I was his secret. And that made him hire me faster. If I had been Tony Robbins or Byron Katie, they, he wouldn't have even let me in. That's really interesting, Dif different way to look at it. Um, so something that's been really helpful to me is, and I've, I don't know if you said this or this just occurred to me, was I'm, I'm guessing you were coaching and, and creating clients you know, before anyone used Facebook, before anyone was doing any of that. I, I mean, I love the way you talk. You, you've got this beautiful, low-key, mm. uh, British accent that, you've, that you're affecting. Uh, that, that, that is that attracts people to you. It feels like I'm kind of screechy and uh, anyway, am I talking too loud? No, I'm no, gonna, no, not at all. See if I can be a little. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if I can be really mellow for a while. Go ahead and ask me. I was. I was gonna say that. Um, what 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 helped me? I'm trying to stay on focus, Steve. Is uh, is that you are obviously creating clients and working with businesses and and doing some fantastic work before before anyone was on Facebook, before LinkedIn was a was a big thing, um, before there were any of these kind of internet marketing strategies. And what what's, dinosaurs walking the earth? When I was doing this right. Stuff. So so what's helpful to me is is to know that um, it comes back down to kind of connection one on one, and all of these things can can. While some of them I'm sure are helpful and, and I do a lot of stuff online, um, it really comes down to that one-on-one -on -one conversation, one-on-one -on -one connection with people. That's it. That's everything. That's the only thing. And, uh, you know, I would go into a company and they would say, what, what's your background? What are your credentials? Harvard Business School, McKinsey Consulting, and I'd say, well, bankruptcy, divorce, alcoholism. That's my bet. And they would say, well, you know, that's not I you know, it's not ideal, you know, it's not perfect, but uh, here's here's our real question. Can you help us? And I would say, I've helped others, let's do a pilot and see. And in I would go and I, and I would train at Intel, I would train at Wells Fargo Banks, I trained at Honeywell, you Fortune 500 companies left and right, and I did not have credibility, I did not have authenticity, I did not have a reputation, but I could help. It's all that ever matters. And could, could you talk a little bit more about that, the early days of, because I, I know people really get interested in the detail, and um, how, you know, your first few clients, what, what did you do before all the internet and everything was around? You didn't have any books out. How did you go about having those conversations? We, we, we had um, large stone slabs that we would take a hammer and a chisel to. <laughs> we would show people how to reach us. Um, well, it was back in those days, it was uh, people used the telephone more and uh, made appointments and made talks and um, would. I would send things in the mail so people would open it and read it and get intrigued and, um, and, and I would get appointments and sometimes if a CEO didn't have time to meet with me, um, I would say, I'll meet you, my day is full, he would say, and I, I would say, how about I meet you before your day? I'll come to your office before your day starts and as you come in, I'll, I'll only 10 minutes of your time and then you'll, you'll get whether I'll be useful to you or not. So there were all kinds of ways, and, but the principles are the same. The principles of um, reaching people, communicating with people. If you want to communicate with somebody, there you, you will always do it. So uh, one thing I, I know we haven't really covered in, in depth, and I know you've got some, some strong views on it, you know, what's your view on, on, on having a website, having a business card, um, you know, setting yourself up, getting known, how important is that for new coaches? Well, I, I think um, it can be very reassuring if it bolsters my self-esteem, gives me a greater sense of professionalism, 
uh, they can be fine. It's good. But, but if I think it's vital, or if I think it's going to be a key part of whether I get clients or not, it won't be. It, it can be part of the mix. It can be okay. It, so I don't tell, I used to tell people, forget it. Just talk to people. You'll be fine. Stop distracting yourself. But I don't want to be that radical anymore because there are coaches who, who have nice websites and it's fine. Wouldn't talk you out of it, but never think that that's going to be a, a really key part of you getting clients. It's just it's just somewhat reassuring to them if you ask them to go to your website. Some websites are used better than others. If you look at Rich Litvin, he has all kinds of audios and videos and go here and go there. So his website, before he puts on a weekend seminar or something, his website's very useful to him. He just asks people to go there and check things out. So, but I wouldn't make it a central focus because really the time you spend on that, you could have been talking to somebody and changing their life. So I'm, I'm looking at the time and we're, we're fast approaching an, an hour. Um, what's the one thing you want, you want people to take away from this? So we've got a group full of coaches um, who 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 are all got the three P understanding? A lot of a lot of coaches in the group seem to be fairly new um, to coaching or, or 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 just starting out getting their first few clients. What's the number one thing you want them to take away from this interview? Well, um, the one thing that I think would, if if you're interested in developing a prosperous coaching career, then then the one thing I think is most important is you find someone who has done what you want to do, someone a little further along the success curve, and, and you um, hitch your wagon to that star. You hire that person, and you tell them, I want you to show me what you've done, how you've done it. I want you to apply it to me and my personality and my strengths. And if you're willing to do that, we can do that then I will take you as my, my personal mentor and coach, and from you I will learn how to prosper. That's what I would do. That's what I did. That's what every coach I know um, who succeeded found someone, some coach, and did it. Now, you don't have to do it right away. You can, you can learn first. You can learn from what Ankush is doing. But you can hire on Kush too. That's that's the next stage of your commitment if you're that committed. Or hire someone like you who is who knows all you have to do is hire someone who's a little bit ahead of you, mm. who's gone through what you want to go through, and have them walk you through it. That would be the number one thing I would do if you want to succeed. And you can do other great things. I would go to every Everything George Pransky's putting on, his online classes. I know George and Michael Neal do classes on business and how to grow your business. I would absolutely tap into that resource if you're a three principles coach. Um, but otherwise, that would be the one thing, is um, don't just leave it to chance whether you'll be prosperous. There, You can be prosperous as a coach. It isn't some thing that happens to some people and doesn't happen for others it's you can create it. it it is not not any harder than any other profession to be to become to make good money out. yeah thank that, that that's a great place to to leave it and i i'm just reflecting that maybe something that i learned before i came into coaching was just to hire good people because i, I kind of came through the men's self-development world and I was always interested in different books, different authors, different trainings. And, and I got a lot of stuff from reading and I got a lot of stuff from listening to audiobooks for years. But the last two or three years before I then decided to get into coaching was, and, and because I'd got more senior in my career, I had a bit more cash, I, I hired people and I went to trainings. And I found that my own personal development massively and exponentially increased from investing in, in, in coaching and training and courses far more than it did when I was kind of doing it on my own and so when I got into coaching it was almost like a no-brainer for me that I wanted to hire someone to help me along the way 
and um, I've, I've hired some, some great people and I know you and I have been working together and continue to work together and, and it's been massively helpful for me. If, if people want to find out more about you, Steve, if, if people want to know more, how might they be able to do that? Oh, I just have a website. Here I've just said websites don't matter and I'm going to give you my website. <laughs> But that's it's stevechandler.com, and and it'll it'll tell you what's going on. I hope I don't look at it very often, but I think it will. I don't recommend. I mean, I mean we've got a lot of stuff that we can send you. Yeah. I don't recommend you buy anything. I'm not here to sell anything. Hmm. We've got a lot of stuff we can send you. Just go to the website. Brilliant. And and one thing I would highly recommend um, apologies for any other 3P coaches I don't read anyone else's newsletter but Steve I do read yours yours is the only newsletter I read so at a very minimum I would strongly recommend people go onto your website and, and sign up for the free newsletter and I know you give some free bonuses away for, for signing up too but um, it's genuinely like very very useful and, and um, I, I, I love receiving those so uh, thank you thank you for coming on today thank you for uh, thank you. recording this well, and thank you for everything you're doing to help coaches in the Three Principles community. It's just so needed and so good. Thank you. Cheers, Steve. <laughs>